Bible is clear. You know, Matthew 24, 14 says, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world. That can't change. It's going to happen. You just have to ask yourself, now how are we playing into the bigger picture of what God is already doing? Check, check, one, two, one, two. Okay. Let's try it. Frequently, you know, I'm flying over isolated regions, places like Region 8, um, Region 9. Especially in Region 8, there's a lot of very rough roads, mountainous roads. And these, these villages, uh, when you go out there, that you, you just you look down and you say, how in the world are we going to get the gospel out there? You have a couple of choices. You're either going in by land, or you're going in by air. You know, if you go in by land, you have to go over those mountains, those mountainous roads and so on. Uh, it's not an easy task. When you fly over these regions and you look down and you see, you know, villages where there's these mountainous roads that are winding up a, a knife edge cliff, you're just thankful for an airplane because it makes a huge difference. And we're able to do with that airplane we're able to do in minutes what sometimes it takes days, even weeks, to do otherwise. Down in Region 9, the furthest airstrip is called Guns. It's named after the person who, who built the airstrip. His last name was Guns. In order for them to travel out, it takes close to two weeks of just traveling, catching a boat, walking, catching another boat, walking, I can make that trip in about 35 minutes in an airplane. So I, when we're talking air travel, especially in these hinterland areas of Guyana, it makes a huge difference. The, the airplane has really helped to build a bridge. Um, I think of Kopinong. Kopinong village was very close to the gospel, very close to the Three Angels message. Um, we were having very difficult time getting it, breaking into the region, and yet we were able to, with the airplane, we were able to go in, do some flights, uh, establish some relationships, and eventually they started to, to relax a little bit. They gave us a piece of land. We were able to uh, get a Bible worker to go in there and to do some work, uh, built a house, and eventually they had a, they, uh, an evangelistic campaign and now there's a church uh, built there. The airplane basically extends what we're doing to different locations, hard to reach locations, because it, it, it's a very, very powerful tool, but it's just a piece. We're missionaries that just happen to fly. Because what, what ends up happening is that when you go to these villages and so on, you're able to build relationships. That is so important. You're able to um, 
see things that you wouldn't see just by sitting here in Georgetown. You're able to accomplish things by being on location. You can't duplicate that in any other way. And so the airplane allows us, it's a tool, a very, very powerful tool. And I would say it's more than a tool, it's a bridge. It allows us to be able to build connections to places that we need to go and people that we need to see. The hard part is past us. Because we are established here in the country of Guyana, because we have a good relationship with civil aviation, we can fly pretty much anywhere in this country. God has blessed us in that regard. Now what we need to do is we need to find more pilots and more airplanes. We presently, we are flying a Cessna 182. Uh, we've, after doing a lot of research, we found that the 182 happens to be the best airplane for our projects. And the reason is simple, is because it runs out of automotive gas. And because we're burning auto gas, it cuts our operating costs in half. Right now, we have need for at least two more Cessna 182s. If we had three aircraft, one based up in the north, in Georgetown or in Bethany, one in Parima and an aircraft down in the south and left them. It builds a triangle. And from this triangle, we're able to basically cover every single region in this country. Ultimately speaking, if we're able to, let's say, establish a flight base in Lethem, what would that allow us to do? From Lethem, if you draw just, let's say, a one hour radius, and from that one hour radius, you can hit almost everything in region nine, all the way around to region eight. By putting a flight base there, you're able to um, hit almost every airstrip in region eight and region nine in just one hour. It would basically turn this country upside down. Probably about seven years ago, I saw a video. A video that really had a deep impact on me. Uh, I saw uh, what people were doing with Mission Aviation down here in Guyana. And I was so deeply touched that I realized that I wanted to be a part of it. Now, I didn't realize at the time that it was kind of a long road uh, to actually make that happen. It's, it wasn't an easy road, but um, I'm glad that I did. But when I came down here, I got involved mainly with the school out in Parima. And for about two and a half years, I didn't do any flying. I was mainly a uh, principal uh, of the school out there. It helped me to see, you know, being a, a pilot um, is just a a small piece of the mission work down here. The, a lot of people see the aviation as being kind of the centerpiece. It's important, and I don't want to minimize the importance of being a pilot down here because it, it, it's a very, very powerful tool, but it's just a piece. We're missionaries that just happen to fly. It's being a missionary that, that matters the most because sometimes you know, the, the reality is that the airplane is on the ground. We're waiting for parts, the weather's bad. You know, for whatever reason, there's a number of reasons that can ground an airplane. But the mission keeps going, and that's what we're about. God uses people. That's his mode of transmitting the gospel. He could have chosen angels. He could have left us out of the mix altogether. But he's chosen us. And in a certain way, he's allowed us to be a part of the, this great gospel commission of spreading the good news and telling the good news. And the reason why is simple, because when we share the good news, we become more and more like Jesus. That's the object. God is trying to make us into the image of his son. And when we, when we are sharing the love of Jesus, that's what happens.